Hi, I'm Dr. David Bilstrom. I'm the medical director of the International Autoimmune Institute at Bingham Memorial Hospital. So the next test we're going to talk about is a saliva test and it's saliva cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that's made by the adrenal glands that sits on top of the kidney. Now they call cortisol the stress hormone. Vitally important for the immune system, vitally important for keeping away inflammation in the body. A good example of how it works to get rid of inflammation is in your body, cortisol should turn into cortisone. Cortisone is a steroid hormone that your body makes naturally that gets rid of inflammation. So anytime somebody gets any kind of benefit from a steroid medication, whether it's a rash and you use a steroid cream, you may use a steroid nasal spray, you may use a steroid for your asthma, you may have a steroid injection for a, a bad knee. Anytime somebody gets better with a steroid medicine, it always begs the question, well, why do I need steroids from the outside? Why am I not making enough of the steroids on the inside to get rid of this inflammation? Now, saliva is a wonderful way to test for cortisol. Ideally, cortisol should be highest in the morning and then slowly go down through the day and hits us, and hits us low point at night. We fall fast asleep easily. We stay asleep all night long. Great restorative sleep. Nothing wakes we, us up. We wake up ready to take over the world the next day. That may not sound like what most people experience though. Now oftentimes cortisol is tested for in a blood test and just tested in the morning. Now knowing that it should be different at different times of the day, just knowing what it is in the morning doesn't give you enough information to really understand what's going on. Sometimes cortisol is tested on a 24 hour urine test where you see the total cortisol production over the 24 hour period. That's a great test when you're looking for the extremes of cortisol abnormality, which would be Addison's or Cushing's. Addison's is a disease where cortisol production is very, very low. Cushing's is a disease where cortisol levels are very, very high. Very unusual. Most people with a cortisol issue are not that bad. But the average over a 24 hour period may be deceiving. The average may look good, but you may be totally low during the time of the day when you're supposed to be high, and totally high when you're supposed to be low, but the average comes out looking very nice. So with the saliva cortisol, you want to test people four times during the day. You want to test them at 7 a.m., noon, 5 p.m., and 10 p.m. to see what their rhythm or potentially lack of rhythm is. The saliva testing of the cortisol is a much better indicator of what's going on inside the cell than the serum blood work. And really, most of the action in the body is occurring within the cell. The liquid part of the blood, the serum, just carries the cells around. So with the blood test, you're just checking the serum, but with the saliva, you're checking the intracellular levels. So the worst time to check for a stress hormone level is right after you get stabbed with a sharp object, and that's basically what a blood draw is. You're stabbing with a needle, and it's gonna alter the stress hormone level immediately. So if we were to check somebody's cortisol with a blood draw, they come in to see me and I say, oh, by the way, your saliva cortisol levels are quite high, they're gonna look at me and say, well, you just stabbed me with a sharp object, wouldn't that throw off my cortisol? And I'd have to say yes. So that's another reason why it's so much better to do the saliva cortisol. You also don't have to get stuck four times in a day. Now when you do the saliva cortisol test, the report comes back looking like a graft. Here on the horizontal axis, we have AM and PM. Here on the vertical axis, we have the amount that's there. Now ideally, you should be highest in the morning, slowly go down as the day goes on. Now, you don't want to be too high or too low, but this is a system that's designed to go up and down, up and down, up and down, a little bit every day. To the body, stress is stress. Emotional stress, physical stress, spiritual stress, it's all stress. So, let's say emotional stressors. Driving in traffic, now I'm home. Tough day at the office, now I'm home. I have lovely children, they're kind of driving me crazy. Now they're in bed. So all those emotional stressors will raise you up, and then you come back down. Same thing applies though for physical stressors. Let's say you step off a curve wrong. Ouch, sprained my ankle, that really hurts. I think I'm gonna have to put some ice on it when I get home. But I have many errands to run before I get there. By the time I get home though, oh my gosh, my ankle's fine. Body, you didn't need my help at all. You took care of it. I was willing to help you with ice. You didn't need my help. Down you come. The thing is, if you get this too much and too often or too big of stressors, people will go way up high and get stuck there. You get stuck in the stress mode, stuck in the fight or flight mode. Now when you get up here, you start developing health problems you can't fix. And you may ask your body, body, I'm not feeling that well. I'm tired, I'm sore, I'm not sleeping, I have these kind of issues. I would like you to fix them for me. I know in the past when I sprained my ankle, you did a lovely job. You didn't even need my help at all with ice. I would like you to do the same thing now with these problems. But when you get stuck up in here, your body looks at you like you're crazy. And the reason is, imagine you were down here, perfect place. Now near Bingham Memorial Hospital, we have Yellowstone. Imagine you go up to Yellowstone and you take a walk. You think, how beautiful. 
you can't help but feel better taking a walk in Yellowstone. But imagine you're taking the walk and all of a sudden a bear jumps out and wants to eat you. What do you think your stress hormone would do? It's going to go up. But will it go up? I'll sprain my ankle, driving in traffic, tough day at the office. No, it goes way up here. So when people get stuck up in here, it feels the same way or their body's like a bear is chasing them. Life or death, fight or flight mode, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, month after month, maybe year after year. Depends on how long you can run from a bear. So you start developing these health problems you can't fix. And you say to your body, body, I would like you to fix these things. Your body looks at you like you're crazy because it says, we got a bear chasing us. We're talking life or death. A little more important than you're sore, you're tired, can't sleep, bad menstrual cycles, autoimmune disease. I would be happy to fix this for you. That's what bodies do. We fix things. You get a cut, you don't have an open wound the whole rest of your life. You should get, you should fix it. I would be happy to fix these, but we got to get rid of the bear first. Well, you can only run from the bear so long and you get really tired, really sore, just not able to do the thing you need to do and you crash. People don't feel well up here. They feel even worse down here. Now, oftentimes when people are up here, they kind of write these symptoms off to, well, that's life. My work is stressful. Raising kids is stressful. Maybe it's my age. I don't sleep so good anymore. Maybe it's genetics, but, but that's probably how I'm supposed to feel given what my life is like. No, you, you should feel great no matter what. And these things may be common, but they're not normal. Now, I don't tend to see people when they're up here. What I tend to see is people that are starting to crash or already crashed. Up here, you get by, maybe this is the way it's supposed to be, but once you start to crash, that's when people say, oh my gosh, I really need to find somebody that's going to help me. I just cannot keep going. So this cortisol, is so important. Gotta get rid of the bear if you're still running from the bear. Once the crash happens, you're basically laying there, the bear's standing right over you. We may say, okay, body, let's get up and let's get going, let's fix this stuff. Your body's like, you gotta be crazy. Why would I even try to get up and get going again when the bear's right there? So one way or the other, you gotta get rid of the bear, gotta get rid of the bear. There's real specific ways when you start getting rid of that bear, and then your body is like, okay, I'm ready to start fixing these things. And people start noticing that a lot of their health problems will start getting better at the same time because that's what the body does. You just got to get rid of the stuck in the life or death mode at first. But what are some of the ways that you can tell people are stuck in the stress mode? Well, in children, one thing that may happen is that they don't fall asleep well at night. They end up staying up late. That also is what tends to happen to adults. They become night people. They tend to like to stay up late at night and probably get their most restorative sleep in the morning between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. That's what makes it very difficult for these folks because they get their only restorative sleep when the world says you have to get up and go to school, when the world says you have to get up and get a job, they do not get the chance to get the only restorative sleep they might get all night long. Now, sometimes in children you, you see this and it, and it comes out as ADD. They have a hard time concentrating. Now, you can imagine when a bear first jumps out and wants to eat you, you're gonna be concentrating very well. You're going to be running as fast as you can, jumping over logs, ducking under branches. You're not going to be spacing out and saying, oh, what a lovely cloud formation that is, and you go splat into a tree and the bear eats you. But after you've been running from the bear so long, you really start losing your focus. You start tripping over those logs. You don't get quite so good at ducking underneath the branches, it catches your arm. You really start losing your focus. So with ADD, ADHD, you start really losing your focus and you can't concentrate. That's why the medicines, example might be Ritalin, Basically, it's an amphetamine that just produces another bear to create that stress response. And yeah, you start concentrating better because there's another bear chasing you now, but basically you're just recreating the problem that got you into trouble in the first place. You see this in adults, trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are worriers, and they may say, I've always been a worrier. Well, that basically means they've always been stuck in a stress mode. Anytime somebody's grinding their teeth, biting their fingernails, picking at their cuticles, doing this all day long, you also know they're stuck in a stress mode. Cortisol is off and you have to start getting rid of that bear. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for the body to, to heal in any other way. In parting, I'd just like to say, please remember, your body is always ready to heal, just needs to be given a chance. Bingham Memorial Hospital. Experience Bingham.